Welcome to episode 11 of No BSTS. I'm Jack Harrington at Jaher on Twitter. And in this one, we're going to take a look at enums and literal types. Let's get right into it. So I'm going to create another file. We're going to call this one enums.ts. And I'm going to create some constants. And these are going to be loading states. So I'm going to have one called before load. I'm going to have another one called loading. And I'm going to have another one called loaded. So building on top of that, I'm going to create an is loading function. That's going to tell me if the current state is loading. And in this case, it's just a string, right? So it's just, so let me see. In this case, it's going to be state and then equals 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 loading. Eh, okay. So I can go in here and I can say, is loading dog, right? And it's going to return false because dog is not the same as loading. So this is not great. I've seen this happen a lot. And really what this is, is that these three constants are actually related and they're essentially mutually exclusive. So the better way to model this is with a feature called an enumeration. So I'm going to make one and we'll call it loading state. And we're basically just going to take these values and kind of paste them in there, but get rid of that const. And then change out those semicolons for commas. All right, now in this case, we can go down here to is loading. We can say that state is a loading state. And then we can compare it to loading state dot loading. Let's get rid of these because they're no longer necessary. And now we're here, now I'm getting an error. I'm saying that's not a loading state. So I can just do loading state dot, and I can get hinted with all of the different discrete states. There you go, before load. Now, you actually don't even need to do this equality here with these strings. You can just do something like that. But in that case, you're just going to get either 0 and an ascending value from 0. So before load would be 0. In this case, if I were to take this one off, loading would be 1, and loaded would be 2. But I actually prefer to use strings if it is an actual uh, kind of system like this, because if I want to be able to console log it later, then I'm going to get something like before load as opposed to zero or one or whatever. So how would I use these in other scenarios? Well, let's take, for example, a map. I'm going to create a map to English strings for this. And I'm just going to use a bracket in there and then say loading state dot before load is before load, just like that. So that's how you use it to define a key like that. It's just basically like any other value. OK, let us talk about literal types. Because they're kind of related in a way. So I'm going to make a, a new function called roll dice. And we're going to assume that we're D&D players. So we want a number of dice that we're going to roll. And it's going to return a number. And then let's just implement it right away. Let's let i equal 0. i is less than the number of dice. Go on to the next i. And we'll have, a, I guess, a pip count. Is that what they call it? And then we'll do pip plus equals. And we'll do, I guess, six-sided die. So math.random times five plus one, I guess. But that would be floating point. We don't want that. So let's floor that. And I think that's actually probably going to do the right thing. So let's return that. And then we'll do a console log. I'm going to roll dice for four dice. And let's do a test on this. Let's do Again, mpxts node, and then do our enums. And we get false, which comes out here for our is loading state. And then uh, 15, which would be, I guess, you know, four times some random number on those dice. That's great. But what happens if I want to constrain that number down to just one, two, or three dice? We only have 1d6, 2d6, or 3d6. Really easy to do with a numeric 
or a number literal, or just basically a literal type. So let's do one, two, or three. So in this case, the only values that we are willing to accept for dice are either one, two, or three. So in this case, four is invalid, three is just fine. So another variant on a literal type is a string literal type, and you see this a lot. So I'm gonna use that to create a send event, which is a variant on our functional overloading stuff that we learned about in episode four. Let's give it a try. So I'm gonna first create a send event, and it's gonna have an event name, just string, and then some data, which is gonna be essentially unknown at this point. Don't know what the data is gonna be. And we'll just console log that out. JSON, stringify, whatever we get in there for data. And this is going to return a void, but we do actually know what the events are. So let's go and create new functional overloads. And for the first one, we're gonna say that the name is checkout and the data in that case is whatever's in the cart, cart count, which is a number. And we'll make one more, we'll say you know, add to cart. This is my e-commerce experience coming back. And then product ID, which is also a number. So now when I do send event, if I specify add to cart as an example, then when I do data in this case, I'm hinted that the only thing that I can put in for data for the add to cart variant is that product ID, make it a, a number, whatever, fine. So these are string literals. It's gonna match whatever is here to that particular literal for name. And then if that equates, which it does in this case, it's gonna then follow on and get the correct signature for you. And you see this with functional overloading. You also see this in interfaces. And it's just great stuff. It's another great feature of TypeScript that I can't wait for you to check out. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this quick look at enums and literal types. In episode 12, we're going to look at classes and get into implements and member visibility, which are great new features of TypeScript that extend your ability to do object-oriented programming in that context. Can't wait to see you there. Of course, in the meantime, if you like this video, feel free to like and share it with your friends. If you really like the video, feel free to hit that subscribe button ring that bell, and you'll be notified the next time a new No BSTS episode arrives.